Hello friends, so new video and it's time to work on flaps assembly. So basically everything except flaps for the wings have been completed, right? Except of course the bottom, uh, bottom schemes of the wings and except of course the fuel tanks. But at least everything is ready for pre-closure inspection, for Canadian MDRA pre-closure inspection. And now today I'm going to be starting to work on, towards my uh, flaps assembly. It's going to take me some time. Once my flaps are completed, I'm planning to schedule my pre-closure assembly uh, inspection. Uh, the reason for that is I just want to like before start my fuselage kit, which will arrive next year. Uh, I would like to finish up with tail cone, finish up with wings. So I would like to cover everything, just like to, to put it aside and to make sure it's all done. Exceptionally in the wings, I will not be covering the bottom skins until probably airplane is ready to fly. Uh, why uh, not ready to fly, but at that point when everything else is done. Why? Because I still have to figure about the autopilot servo, I have to still figure out about PITO, what I'm going to be using for that. Like there are some things which are still should be accessible in the wings, so I don't want to deal with the bottom skins for now. Accept that, yeah. Now the turn of the flaps to be assembled and I'm going to continue on that. And on another note, um, now it's a time around since a one year of my project has been started. So basically about a year ago, in the very first days of November, I started my build project. And uh, my uh, tail cone progress was kind of slow. It took me, if I'm not mistaken, over half, over six months, over half a year to finish it, while wings are moving well, significantly faster and I'm happy about that. And if we talk about the things I regret, if we talk about something I regret, I would say that I regret I have not started this build way earlier. I mean, if I started that build like three years ago, I would probably now be flying my RV-10. So that's the only regret I have. Aside of that, I'm really happy I'm working on that. I'm building that. It's really cool. It's a, it's a whole different world for me and I, I really love what I'm doing. All right, let's watch my uh, flaps assembly. Okay, so where are we up now with my elevators, oh sorry, flaps build? Well, basically nowhere. I got a problem. So I started to prepare all the parts for my uh, flaps, for my wings, and I faced a problem. And the problem is, I'm missing two parts, two of those ribs. I have no idea how this happened, to be honest. When I received my wings kit, I rechecked everything, recount everything. Hell, how I missed those two, I don't know. So basically, according to my shipping packing list, I must have 11 of each, 11 of 2005 right and 11 of 2005 left. That's a part number of it, right? In fact, I have 10 of each. So I'm missing just one left and one right. So technically, I can build one flap, no issues but I still need two of those parts to finish a second flap. Well, that won't stop me from building a flap, I mean for, from preparing everything to build a flap, because I have all other parts, right, so I can work on every, anything, everything else. But I need those two parts, and those two parts I need basically to order from Vans. Because I'm in Canada and Vans obviously is in the United States, shipping is, well, it is expensive. 
and not only the shipping but also the fact that it will take some time and I decided that I may need something else to order from Vans just because well what's the point those two parts the weight is I don't know like 20 grams and I still will pay about 80 or 90 Canadian dollars just to ship it or even 100 Canadian dollars just to get it here I have no other options we're in Canada that's a part of the game so I decided to get back to my uh, uh, to my elevators you remember maybe maybe not remember I'll remind you I'll show you right now the first problem with my elevator if you don't remember it's on the second elevator is the crack so I got basically like a long crack right here on the second elevator because I bended those tabs improperly first time so like long crack on the second elevator which is not good but that's technically easily repairable repairable I don't need to replace a skin I just need basically to install inside piece of aluminum right and just rivet it with the flush heads rivets on both sides it's gonna work it's fine what the biggest issue for me is I don't know if you can see it but let me try to show you I have a hum here so basically right here I have a hum like that and that hum is well it's noticeable it is noticeable like that's a flat flat I go I go flight now I go like that and again flat and that hum actually came from my second stupid mistake uh, because this, the other elevator I already completely disassembled by the way it took me about four hours to disassemble it completely I removed this part from my second elevator and this is the rear spar this rear spar those tabs those two tabs they have an angle and that angle if I'm not mistaken is so as you can see right here it says 96 degrees so this rear spar supposed to have 96 degrees for those for each tab in respect to the bottom to the main to the spar right and that angle has to be rechecked because that angle may change when you actually do a dimpling of your uh, rear spar and to be honest I don't understand why we do machine counter thinking of some holes like 29 holes while all other holes are uh, get dimpled I know that there is the that uh, piano type hinge here but I rather prefer to uh, like to make all holes uh, rather dim I, I mean I prefer to make the machine counter think rather dimpled anyway after you complete your dimpling of holes you must ensure that this angle has not changed that you still have those 96 degrees and I didn't check that imagine how stupid I was oh my goodness and what's happened well obviously I got a hum here like it is a hum because obviously that this part is is no more it's like 90 degrees 91 degrees here I, I tried to measure so that my second problem because of that I have to remove this spar from inside and actually get it fixed so I have to completely fix this spar to check it to make to change the angle is that a problem and I don't know if I could live with that problem or not probably not because that's a elevator right so we want everything to be smooth and my third problem finally if you remember is my tank sealant which I used here on trailing edge and I was stupid enough not to mix it properly so I basically got a consist uh, consistence of the glue which was sitting for like months still haven't set and even now when I was opening my first elevator so even after a couple of months that tank sealant it was still wet so that's not good and I'm sure the same problem I have in this elevator obviously because despite I cannot see it here I'm sure it is there like so I don't want to leave it like that so that's why I decided to open it up now again you will ask like what to do with the vans in this case I'll explain I still haven't opened this one so after I will open up this one I'll estimate and I'll see if I screw up some parts or not thanks God opening the first one I was lucky I haven't screwed up anything so I just 
remove each rivet it took me lots of time and my spar is still okay so it's still in usable condition and I will just have probably to uh, do uh, like to clean all, all the holes but well there are a couple of holes to be honest which are become wider but I don't know how critical is that anyway I will see if I need to order it from Vans now as soon as I open the second one I will be able to see which parts I need to order from Vans and I will just order it so after I'll get all my parts, I will reassemble everything. I will fix my elevators and I will make a final assembly of, of my flaps. So that's what's happening right now. I'm opening up my uh, second elevator. So let's work. is almost ready. I temporarily mounted it to my wing. What is not done there is basically a trailing edge. So I need still to install a trailing edge and um, add a, I guess, tank sealant or most likely 3M tape. I will read what's better, what's more efficient, or maybe tank sealant. The second flap is also almost ready. 
just still have to put some uh, rivets here on the back uh, back edge back leading edge and well basically those are the blind rivets and at that point I should be ready well so flaps actually took more time than I expected it's uh, well obviously they are bigger than um, ailerons and also the flaps riveting is a bit different from ailerons like with ailerons it was quite simple to do a back riveting so basically all the middle ribs were back riveted it's fast efficient simple while on flaps I um, riveted everything using the backing bar so basically I used the backing bar and I riveted everything there are some rivets for the back riveting like in total maybe 10 or, or more but most rivets are with backing bar and um, the top skin all goes with a uh, standard rivets while the bottom skin comes with the blind rivets I have not I installed the bottom skin but I have not riveted it using the blind rivets yet until my um, inspection is completed after the inspection I will do that but it's, it should be quite simple process too aside of that things going well I fixed my uh, I fixed my uh, elevators I'm not 100% sure I did a great job there. Um, there was a crack on the uh, angled part of aluminum. So first of all, I drilled two holes which prevented that crack to extend. The second what I did is I uh, manufactured the aluminum plate, aluminum angle, which I installed in the same spot. And that, as you can see, gives me uh, more strength on this side of the of the skin. I added a few rivets on both sides as well as I used a tank sealant in order uh, in between those two in, uh, in between the skin and aluminum angle in order to give even more strength to this uh, particular part. I know there is no much of a uh, much of a force on this part is just more like to protect it from the air which will be trying to like to to rip it apart right if, if it's not if it not install it like all those vortices uh, but um, I guess it's gonna be better like that so that's how I repaired that also uh, if you remember I was t telling you about the that hum I basically got rid of it there is still very little hum there I hope it's okay but during removing of the part disassembling and unriveting of whole elevators both elevators I kind of damaged a couple of holes damaged well means those holes are no longer round so what I did I drilled bigger holes and I went with one size bigger rivets for those holes I hope it's okay but the last word will be after inspector to say if not I may have to rebuild it, which I'm ready for because I know that that was my initial mistake, all that tank sealant and um, elevators is very important, super important part because lots of force on elevators. So if inspector says it's not acceptable practice, it's not good, it's not solid rock, I'll just probably order some parts, including skins, and I'll just rebuild everything, just rebuild the elevators. I have no choice, but I rather do that rather than after that I experience some issues. That is so far I'm finishing up on, on my um, flaps and after that that's basically it. Time to complete a first initial leak test on my fuel tanks. So I decided to start with the left one and the first leak test what I'm gonna do basically I'm just gonna fill it up with the water. I'm gonna look closely at each rivet everywhere. If there is a leak we will see it because this is a bed on the floor and on this floor you will already see and uh, yeah that's gonna be just initial test. 
and to actually put water down from the tank I will use this tube just to throw it out outside. So that's going to be the first test and in uh, maybe 10-15 minutes we should see the results. 100 whatever liters of water or 30 gallons, I guess almost 30, maybe 28 gallons are in actually of water, right? So for now everything looks good. You know what I was really worried about initially when I was starting this testing is how actually I'm gonna conduct this testing. So I'm using that standard wooden cradle which was uh, which Vance instructed to build, right? The only thing I added some soft uh, material on both cradles, like on both sides, plus in the middle here uh, right underneath of the tank in the middle I also added a wooden block with a soft material so basically just to dissipate the weight of the tank I understand that technically it's okay just even to be on two points but for such testing in such unusual for fuel tank um, uh, position which is vertical right instead of horizontal I'd rather do like that we will see so so far so good everything looks okay I don't see any leaks like no visual leaks anywhere for now but it's only about 10 minutes into testing so I guess I will leave it for like 24 hours and after 24 hours I'll be able to, to say are there any issues or not so let's wait those 24 hours and here we go next day 24 hours later even 26 hours later and surprisingly no single leak which I'm really happy about so basically fuel tank full of water and no single leak initially after I started my test yesterday I had a leak from here so I just had to to tighten it a little bit here like this this cover and now it's perfect yeah so well I'm happy about it I don't need to add any water with the uh, coloring uh, like food coloring and I don't need to put any napkins around it just to look for leaks because for this fuel tank I'm good so left fuel tank is done and our next guy will be right fuel tank for the same testing and I'll report to you about that shortly so finally both fuel tanks were tested and I found no leaks which is really great news for me because it looks like I don't need to use any colored water and uh, do any more testing until fuel tanks are covered on top and that's gonna happen after the Canadian inspection from another side as you can see on this table this part is actually a vertical stabilizer and my first very first video and my whole assembly started with this part and I have to take it apart I have to disassemble it well just to be short um, I'm getting ready preparing for the Canadian inspection decided to do my own inspection and um, I found that the quality of work and quality of shop heads of rivets is below way below the uh, I guess expectations of the inspector it's a bad quality to be honest that was the first part I was working on lots of overset rivets like really overset uh, yeah well that's mainly the main issue here like lots of overset rivets so when I'm saying overset well if that's the tool to check the rivet head so rivet head doesn't fit here at all and it's it doesn't even closely fit here <laughs> so it's really overset lots of such rivets so basically not all but imagine 70 percent which is it's, it's ridiculous and I decided to re-rivet that I have time I uh, feel that I better can do this job I don't want to leave it like that even though if inspectors say okay it passes wherever still I'm gonna fly that airplane so I feel uh, it's not it doesn't mean that like you have to run check your rivets find all of our set rivets and just start to redo everything no um, in my case over set rivets are mainly actually all of them are related to skin there are some structural like larger rivets on the uh, longeron uh, those are totally fine I'm talking only about rivets which are set on the skins but I would like to fix that to get it fixed make sure it's all
all fine and after that I'm going to be inspecting my uh, elevators, I'm going to be inspecting my horizontal stub and all the parts one by one before inspector even comes and probably I'll have to replace some rivets there but in this particular part I have lots of bad rivets so I really want to fix it. Aside of that, this is the end of this video. My wings are, well, kind of ready for inspection. My fuel tanks are tested and ready for inspection. I will get some other parts fixed slowly one by one and hopefully that in the next video hopefully by the time I already have my inspection done and I will share with you my thoughts and results of the inspection for now thank you for watching and have a good one bye